Hey everyone, welcome back. In one of our previous exercises, uh, we did some calculations associated with the trajectory of a projectile, and uh, we use it to uh, learn about naming cells and also uh, some issues related to precedence and associativity. But on that particular uh, workbook, we had this drawing of the, uh, the, tr the variables associated with the equations and uh, the shape of the trajectory. The question is, you know, how did I do that? Um, so in this exercise, we're going to talk about how to use the, uh, the drawing tools in Excel. And this can be really useful when you're uh, just creating uh, a little diagram uh, of whatever it is you're trying to solve in the workbook. And this is particularly useful, of course, for engineering applications where you're sometimes dealing with uh, um, geometric problems and uh, equations that have, uh, you know, dimensions and physical properties that uh, can make your your workbook a lot easier to follow and understand if you have uh, some illustrations there. And these tools that are used to make these illustrations are common to uh, pretty much the uh, all of the Microsoft Office uh, tools, including Word, PowerPoint, and, and so forth. So. And what you learn here can be applied elsewhere. And these are really easy to use, so it, it doesn't take too much of a learning curve to, to get this going. So let's, what we're going to do is, is recreate this, this drawing right here. And so we're going to do it right here. This is a copy of this workbook with that drawing gone so that we can recreate it. And uh, let me zoom in here so we can get a real close look at this. Now, by the way, um, what I have here in this workbook is a this is a rectangle that's going to be basically a, a frame where we're going to create these drawings. Now this itself is, is a shape or a, a drawing object, and you don't have to to do that. I, I just uh, created these to kind of uh, make it look a little cleaner and and uh, but, but they don't have to be here. And in fact, sometimes they. Uh, they they complicate the drawing process. So I'm gonna I'm gonna delete that, and we can just go with the information in the background. And in a subsequent uh, exercise, we're, we're gonna fill in these equations down here. But uh, so let's go up and uh, select to get started. You go to the Insert menu, and you select Insert shapes or in the illustration section you, you you do insert shapes and when when you do that it gives you this palette of shapes now there are a number of standard shapes uh, associated with again each of the Microsoft Office products Excel uh, Word PowerPoint and um, the most commonly used ones are listed near the top you, you can draw lines uh, with or without arrows, they can be curved lines. You can do there's a there's a curve object we'll talk about. There's a polygon. There's a, a free form like a scribble, and then you have a bunch of standard shapes down here. And then as you use things, uh, the most commonly used or frequently used shapes show up at, at the top here, and that's so, so that's kind of nice. So what we're going to do we're going to draw the axes of this trajectory, and so I pick the uh, the the line with an arrow and uh, and basically you just uh, click and drag that line let me do that again let me do insert illustration shapes and and again you can do a line with with uh, with no arrows you can do a line with an arrow on the end you can do a line with an arrow on both ends and uh, I'm going to do the the, the line with an arrow on one end. Now the reason I'm redoing this is, is, is I want to show you something is you you click once and you drag and I haven't let go of the mouse button yet but if I push the the shift key watch what happens uh, 
it snaps that line to 45 degree increments. So if you want to make sure your line is perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical, just hold down the shift key while you're dragging and it will uh, make it uh, uh, vertical or horizontal. Now I'm going to change that to a black line. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do that again. And now when, once you've created a drawing object and it's selected, it pops you over to this Drawing Tools tab which gives you a bunch of uh, options for selecting and editing drawing tools and it puts the insert shapes palette right up here and uh, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna click right on the origin of the, uh, the left side of this line I'm gonna hold down the shift key and drag vertically and again I'll change that back to, to black by the way uh, this little palette here shows some predefined line styles sometimes useful I'm just doing a simple black line here and so you know just like that we have um, created our X and Y axes and we'll put some labels on them in a minute but uh, next thing we want to do is insert a curve now that's this this uh, shape right here now a curve curves are really interesting I'm just gonna start clicking here as I create a curve and I'll double click to end and uh, so what that allows you to do is create a nice smooth curve and if I double click on that curve let's see here I oh, know oh, excuse me I gotta right click if I right click and select edit points you'll see that each time I clicked with the mouse it created a, a point or a node or vertex along this curve and if I click on one of those now it it gives me these little handles and I can kind of reshape that curve. Um, I can change the slope and uh, kind of the the curvature at that point, or I can reposition it. Um, you can even right click and do add point to create a new point <clears throat> if you want to sculpt it, or you can right click and uh, do delete point, and that will uh, kind of change things around. So essentially, uh, when you're dealing with a curve, uh, you kind of sculpt the shape of that curve um, using these control points. And uh, so that's a, a, a really useful thing. And if I hit escape, uh, the point editing goes away. And now I can, I can kind of stretch and, and, and rotate that curve um, as an individual uh, object. So I'm going to hit delete. So what we're going to do, we want to create a curve representing the a parabolic arc followed by our projectile. Um, so I'm going to click on one of my, let's see, click on one of my objects to, and then to get back to this tab. And I'm going to use that tool again, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to click once here. And then I'm going to go somewhere up here near the very apex of that trajectory and click one time. And then I'm going to go down just about you know, like double the distance to the peak. And it looks like a nice, uh, well defined parabola. And then I'm going to double click to end that. And so by doing that, I've essentially got uh, a nice looking parabola here. Um, so, hey, we're well on our way here. Now, what next? Um, we need a line representing the, the uh, velocity. So I'm going to click here and draw a line out like that. Uh, we, need a, we need to mark the angle here, alpha. And I'm going to do that using an arc. This, is a, this little tool here is, a, is an arc. And if I click once, whoops, try that again. Um, click on here, arc. I'm going to click and drag. And let's see, so I've got this arc shape, and maybe I want to rotate it down. That's probably a little too large, so I can shrink it and kind of position it how I want. There we go. And uh, so that gives me a little uh, a portion of a circle. And... Um, now I'm ready to start putting some labels on, but I'll probably I want to put some dimensions on for the height and the range. So let's uh, 
let's go back to our single line tool and uh, we'll put a, a line up like that and let's do a, what let's see that one we want to have uh, two arrows so let's let me redo that I'm gonna go down here and select the double arrow line and hold down the shift key so it's perfectly vertical and now by the way I want to create another line like this but down here now I could I could go here and and do it but another way to do it is if I do control D let's see control D it duplicates that and then I can uh, change that line like this and drag it over so sometimes I just copy existing lines rather than creating new one or existing objects. So there are most of our drawing objects. So now if we want to put in some labels, uh, we go back to this tool and this use this little text box object. And I can just put uh, X for here. And uh, now I'm just going gonna, gonna to duplicate that and drag that over here and change that to a Y um, or I can uh, I can also copy it to the clipboard control C control V and this would be the height H and uh, and this would be the range R and uh, so text objects are really convenient and this would be the angle alpha. So to get to get a Greek symbol, <clears throat> one way to do that is to type the corresponding um, uh, English symbol and then change the font to the symbol font, and that makes that an alpha. So A equals alpha, B equals beta, G, C equals gamma, and so forth. So let's see how are we looking. Uh, it looks to me like we've pretty much got that uh, uh, recreated, that whole drawing. Again, if I wanted to uh, put a frame behind that, you don't have to, of course, but if you wanted to do that, you could uh, go to, to the drawing tools and just insert a rectangle. It surrounds that. And then now notice that will obscure it. Uh, so, um, well, first of all, we want to change the, uh, the fill color. Maybe, maybe you want to go with something like this. And then if you, uh, if you uh, right up here, there's these tools that d uh, handle the drawing order. So you could do send backward, and that would move it back one item at a time. Or you could do send to back and that basically moves it behind all of the other objects. So if you're drawing lines, the drawing order doesn't matter, but if you have something that is filled, then the uh, drawing order does matter, and you need to shuffle things up or down in that drawing order to get it to uh, look right. And so, you know, that that's one type of, or that that's an example of a number of these objects. You can also do things like uh, you know, block arrows, and then, uh, you know, change the fill color. Um, another one that's kind of useful is a polygon. So you can just start clicking, and then double click, or, or click on where you started, and it creates a polygon that you can then, you know, change the, the fill color. Uh, let's see, what other ones do we have here? Um, the scribble is just... Uh, to draw something like that. It also puts a series of points in, but a lot of points. Uh, I don't find too much use for that one. Um, anyway, so with a combination of these things, um, uh, you, you can really do a lot of things. And if you ever need to rotate them, there's some nice uh, rotation options here. Flip horizontal, flip vertical. Uh, you can do alignment. Let's suppose I've got um, a series of arrows or something and um, I want them to be left justified. If I hold down the shift key and select them and then do a line left, they're all lined up on the left. You can also do distribute vertically if you want to get them perfectly spaced. Um, 
and then you can also group them if you want and then after they're grouped you can basically treat them as a single object and uh, change the drawing order and rotation and so forth. So anyway, um, check that out. Uh, really easy to use and a great way to add some helpful graphics uh, 